poker tube and I, I did quite a lot of stuff for them and some of that were writing poker strategy articles so I wrote around I don't know 20 articles for them but I have something on tilt that might help you quite a lot and it's called Tilt in Poker 7 Unknown Factors. It says it's 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 non-author because I'm not working with them anymore. But it's like it is it they they've been they've been pretty good. They've been pretty good. It, it just says that they're they're written by oh, there we go. So yeah, Tilt in Poker 7 Unknown Factors and how, how you could be tilting and you couldn't actually know about it so first of all like these these first are easy like hunger and thirst be sure to have like snacks i'm just, I'm just gonna make you like the 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 super like super short version of the article hunger and thirst have yeah. snacks and water try not try, try to uh, not drink soda and not drink alcoholic beverages obviously before being hungry or thirsty can lead to anger, fatigue, and mood swings. So you, you, if if you get hungry and you keep grinding, you're gonna be, gonna be angrier and angrier. Negative vibes from your relatives. So if you're living with someone in your in your current house or home, or you have relatives like your mom, maybe, maybe that was something for me that was yeah. bugging me quite a lot because I couldn't do what I wanted to do, and they were bugging me, and that was tilting me off. And I figured that out, and I I I kind of I kind of like went honest with them this is what i'm gonna do you're not gonna stop me i'm gonna finish college also but i'm this is what i'm gonna do so they had absolutely nothing like i was i told them this when i was actually living from poker so there was like nothing they could do lack of exercise this is very important i actually bought myself uh, a bike uh, a home home bicycle that i, I paid like I, secondhand home bicycle i paid like 30 euros for it not even kidding it is amazing like every morning when i wake up or before every grind i just i just pedal like two or three kilometers on it take a shower and then i'm fresh i'm ready i'm i'm really paying attention to what i'm doing after that so i can actually wow. feel the difference and it's not that expensive it's just it's just it's just 30 euros or find one for like 50 euros it, i'm sure you can find one in germany on on ebay or whatnot in your city i'm sure you can find one so get one and on your bike <laughs> so on your bike and and it's gonna be cool second article is about um stress from work and classes so are you following like college right now are you a student or uh, you not have right a job now. Not right what not right are, you, are you working are you or or not um uh, sometimes yeah sometimes oh not, not, uh, not like monthly oh, oh cool. a few times in a week oh, cool. so you don't have you don't have like stress from uh yeah, no, stress no, from no. job. It, it's kind of like freelancing, I guess. Yeah, it like is. Hmm? It is. Oh, so you're, you're a programmer? Uh, no, no. I, what do you say? If if you're a programmer. No, I'm not. Oh, I was just I was just wondering, just just curious. Um. Yeah. So basically, the last like this. This is this is kind of like a touchy, like weird topic. But depression could really, 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 really like if you're if you're and probably to be honest, having seen your results lately in NL10, you're, yeah. you're probably pretty depressed about them. Like you're beating NL10 oh, yeah. now or not? What is what is wrong with my game? Why can't I like after so many hands? Why can't I like pull the plug? Why why can't I like like close the close the deal? Right? And yeah. I think that is that is like paradoxically that is one of the factors that leads you one of the factors that that leads you to uh to not winning honestly like not winning it is. not winning a few sessions can lead to a lot more non-winning sessions because yeah. you're just you're just throwing stack stacks off and now for the practical things like last thing is mental instability and unpeacefulness so if you're doing stuff that 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 is that is kind of like dangerous or if you're if you're not at peace with your conscience your game will not improve that much and you'll you'll just start tilting whenever whenever you lose a few stacks so this is kind of like the the way to become a professional poker player all right so now enough of the reasons and more of the how to so pre session uh, can you, yeah uh can you link me that one Sure, of course. Uh, yes. All, all three, right? Okay. So this is first. This is okay. the second, and this is the third. Bang! All right. This is really in interesting. Yeah, I, I really, I really gathered a lot of stuff, and like checking your general energy levels 
before before a session do not play when you're tired do not play when it's late and you haven't slept for a while because it'll just it'll just mess with your brain like your brain is not functioning at optimal frequency so you yeah. won't be you won't be like the problem is mostly patience the problem is mostly patience so you won't like when you get some hands and in zoom especially i feel like sometimes when you get hands at three tables you can't really like decent ha playable hands at three tables and especially because you're stealing quite a lot right you're stealing quite a lot yeah. so you're gonna be playing hands left and right playing 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 and also i've coached honestly i've coached the guy at nl 10 his nick his nickname is based along you might have seen it at the tables it's uh, maybe yeah. it's 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 like this based along like this um he thinks that you're some sort of god man honestly i mean like yeah he sees you at the table and he he's, he tells me like jesus christ whenever i see this guy he's got like 50 bucks at 10 l 10 he must be <laughs> so good he must be so awesome and when I saw the nickname, I knew, like, by the way, did you ever stream? Uh, yeah, but other games, like Leeds of Legends. Oh, so you, you, no. you're also streaming on Twitch? Uh, yeah, oh, sometimes. Sweet. sweet, awesome, awesome. I, I never got into MOBAs, I'm more of a FPS, like CSGO, Quick Live kind of guy. But it's, I, I, respect, yeah. I respect the strategy that's behind that, it's just, it, it's hard, man. I, I, I Honestly, I didn't get into MOBAs because... I think that um, it takes a lot, a lot of time to learn, and I, I don't want to. I, 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 I can invest that time into poker. I was almost in a professional level in League of Legends, but I didn't have that time to it's, play it. So it much. is, it is so hard to get because it's just so many people. So it's, it's yeah, just so hard yeah. to get, bro. You, you, fucking Chinese guys. Exactly, Asian. exactly. And also, I, I heard that Riot is not the best company ever. Uh, yeah. They did some stupid stuff, yeah. so yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it kind of makes me hate the game. But it's, 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 it's like, like the company is wow. I, I heard some stuff like that sounded like communism. So, what, what the fuck, right? Yeah. Well, really funny that your friend thinks that I'm so good. <laughs> well, to be honest, like you, you have, you have basics down, but I think you're just, you're just, um, you're, you're kind of like off temper, and in a lot of spots, you got way too far when you should be. Calling or folding, you're you're calling or raising. Yeah, I'm never believing my opponents. Yeah, that is the problem. That is like I saw. That's the problem. You're afraid to get bluffed. Players uh, at NL10, let me let me tell you something. Like this is the most. This will help you the most. They are not good at value betting. They are not as good as value yeah. betting as you are. I think you'll you'll do better at null mid 100 in your current state than at null mid 10. But do not go yeah. there. Do not go there until you can beat <laughs> no. null mid 10. Because until you get these basics down and understand these players, you won't be able to understand those players with balancing and so on. So do not like do not do not try shots upwards. But no, I'm not going. Honestly, honestly, you'd be better there than here. And basically telling me that you 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 were about to be a MOBA pro just. You have that solid foundation, man. You have the brain. So what yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, check your mental state. So are you at peace with yourself? Did you have any events? They, like This is pre-session. Pre Don't start if you're tired or if the current day or you're pissed about something. Right? So do mm -hmm. not start. Do not start. Take a break. Like What I do, what I do is, is go for a walk. That is the best thing that I can do. Get out of your home. Get out of your home. It helps so much. 30 minutes. Go to the closest coffee shop or coffee coffee kiosk and get a get a flavored coffee like uh, macadamia nuts or whatever you want. That will help. I, yeah. I promise you. It doesn't mean really matter if you do, if you don't drink coffee. Just go there and come back and just get a I don't know a popsicle or whatnot. And <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. I'm not even kidding. The yeah. walk takes yeah. like during the walk, you get time for yourself. To think about your issues that you've had and that just yeah. clears them out of your conscience you're not thinking about them when you're playing and that is the best thing that you can do as 100 percent the best thing that you can do and like sure check your mental state yeah exactly are you at peace with yourself and this yeah. is in the heat of battle this is the most important part uh, you've lost two stacks you've lost four stacks and you've lost six stacks and probably your mind right about now so if you've lost two stacks like basically think about like try to think about are you pissed did you put your money in good are you actually 
Like, uh, your play is excellent. You can't do anything about flopping middle set and getting beat by a running flush, right? So, are you yeah. actually pissed about that? Or are you actually happy that you got your money in the good and you're going to keep continue, like, continue doing that and just, just keep on keeping on, basically? Uh, if you've lost yeah. four stacks, then now I'd suggest the 30-minute break, usually, if you've lost four stacks. I suggest just just take a little like small small break. If you if you have been putting your money in good, and you're not pissed, mm -hmm. which I don't think happens that much with you. Usually, I think you get pissed after losing four stacks. Um, no, no, no. Like the walk is the best way. If you want to continue playing in that day, the walk is the best way that that you can you can just shake off a little bit of shake off a little bit of nerves, come back, keep um. playing. That's important. Okay. Do, during the walk, please do not take your phone and play spinning goes or whatnot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay. I know that it's a serious thing to take breaks and do something else if you lose much. It's yeah, or play a... play a lol game with noobs and own them. Seriously, <laughs> that could yeah. work. I'm serious, that could work. It makes you feel better. I'm good at this shit. And there's no variance involved, almost. So I can just destroy them because they're noobs. If if they're like, I'm I'm sure in, in lol there is variance involved. Like if you if you're playing versus a good team and you're a good team, there will be a lot of variance involved. There is a lot. Yeah, yeah I can understand these phenomena. I can I can I can really tell there is a lot of variance involved. Like like in Quake Live, for example, players yeah. got so good that the the start spawns influenced the whole game. So it's it's like yeah. if you get a shitty star spawn, that it's it's just hard to win it. That that's it. Point. Psst. Yeah, that's true. All right. So yeah, after losing like six stacks, it's it's kind of a lot. Like I can remember when I when I realized I don't tilt anymore is when I lost seven stacks in ten minutes, and it wasn't even my fault. Like I had this, I actually had this over the, the over the million hand that I played. I lost seven okay. stacks. I was down. I was playing nine ten, down seventy. Lost seven stacks in ten minutes, and I was like. In my mind, I was like, "There's there are two ways to go about this. I could keep playing because I I play well. I could keep playing, mm -hmm. not cry on the inside, and just keep grinding it out because I know I've been winning. I've been winning constantly, so I know I'll be I'll be winning, and I I just gotta keep playing. Or I can stop here if if I'm if I feel like I'm tilted. And I didn't feel like yeah. I was tilted after losing seven binds. I'm I'm serious, seven binds, set over set." <laughs> Uh, kings and races stuff like that so it, it was it wasn't my fault so i kept grinding and after three hours i was back to zero so it was amazing it was, it was amazing Gosh. so i was like yeah it's it's it, it doesn't really matter like what life throws at you it matters like how's your attitude towards what you're getting yeah. and are you actually grateful to be to be playing here to be to be a great mind so yeah after you've lost six stacks usually it's time to quit for the day even like even if you're playing your good game, you're bound yeah. to make a few mistakes because it just fucks fucks with your mind. So until you got that that whole like zen thing inside you, it just fucks with your brain. If you're losing six stacks, it fucks with with your brain. You'll be like your bra brain will be saying Joker stars, River stars, whatever. <laughs> it is just yeah, it is just like you'll you'll be you'll be all the time. It'll be like fuck this website. Why is it so fucking hard? Blah blah. Uh, all right. So yeah. Up until you get like zero percent tilt rate, which is almost impossible to get. Like this, I suggest this to be like stop loss for the day, for the day. Yeah, and insert <laughs> insert another coin tomorrow. Good. Uh, All right. So you probably you probably omitted some of those, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I I I'd, I'd really suggest I'd really suggest using using that stop loss. If you drop like twenty binds in days, just man you should use that stop loss seriously because you'll be like yeah. you'll you'll be starting to tilt and you'll find some reasons to stack off with jacks like like i saw here stack off reasons to stack off with jacks when you don't really have any any you don't really have any yeah so this is just this is just bad like you put yourself like sure maybe you can call here but you put yourself in the position of stacking off with jacks against queens plus and ace king so that is just bad that is just oh, bad like bad. these these players try to confuse you with high three bet percentages but you don't really need to you don't really need to be confused just don't like uh, all right um moving on. this this is this was this was a, a pretty pretty normal hand he just shoved here which is super weird i'm always calling with kings here because i'm putting him on ace king 
Like uh, Kings plus uh, Ace King. When when he just stack offs here, I'm putting him Kings plus Ace King. So I'm gonna I'm uh, gonna yeah I'm shoving there. Did he have aces? I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Th this is this is from this month. This is from this month. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So th this was something I didn't understand. So you probably have a lot of history with this guy, Urlo Pan. Mm, which guy? Urlo Pan. This guy. This guy is in the small yeah. Bar. yeah. So it's... what 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 is your history against him? Um, he's really a bad player. I, I just don't want to lose money to him. Yeah, but he, he <laughs> looks he looks pretty solid from his stats. So for, not not solid, but nitty. He looks nitty from his stats. Honestly, yeah, but... one point nine aggression factor. He's not he's he's not really trying like going overboard with you. He's just like that. Thirty five percent steal. So he's only stealing from the small blind 35%. That is way too low. That is way too low. You just like honestly, I just flat here or fold. I don't even care. Like king nine yeah. is it's like probably I don't fold. I flat, but it's still like yeah, sure. Three betting is not bad. Three betting is not bad. But when he four bets, I'm just putting him on a strong hand because this guy, like, look at this three bet. It's way too low. 7.2 look at all the guys like i see all the guys except for japa here with japa you might even be a little bit better 12.5 12 c bet 27 24 but 19 15 it's just nitty it's just too nitty like you have to read a little bit into his stats and understand that he is nitty and you don't really need to you don't really need to to do it like this so when he four bets you yeah. to around two he's good he's good he he has the sizing down he makes it 2.2x right so you should be folding here, honestly, and not not shipping on him, which is super weird. Like this, this will lose you a lot of money in the long run. This will lose you a, a heck a lot of money. There are ways to make money at no limit ten zoom that are way easier than than shipping a king high against against uh, a four bet of this guy who is so tight. So actually, yeah, he called with ace queen, which is super weird. So why not wait for ace king and jacks plus and just do that? And just and just just three bet and then ship with ace ace king and jacks plus, just own his soul, so own his soul. I've been doing that a lot, I think. Yeah, you should you should you should like you're getting you're getting you're playing zoom. You're you're you have the comfort of waiting for hands to happen, right? You're playing. You have the yeah. comfort of waiting for hands. Why not just take that comfort? Why not just take that opportunity? Because other people are doing it, and you're playing a lot a lot looser than them, and you're you're bleeding money just because you're doing like stack offs to to four bets who like guys who four bets like ace queen plus jacks plus and probably never fold yeah that's true like i don't think this guy ever four bet bluffs honestly i don't think this guy ever four bet bluffs 7.2 like look four bet 23 percent like against against the three bet so that is that is not that much that is not meant that much four bet range five percent so it's basically uh five percent it kind of like depends but five percent range is fuck it it's it's five percent it's it's like this let me just take out so nine plus and ace jack uh, how much uh, four bets against three steel do you have the stats for big uh bet, bet again, against three steel. steel versus steel three bet. no i don't i don't Okay. I don't, but I don't think it's that much so that you can shove profitably and he folds uh, enough, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is this is not no limit one hundred. You're like not even at no limit one hundred or two hundred. Are they doing this because they're not like this guy will not for a you enough, like for this to become profitable every time you shove. Like, let's think about it. Like, if 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 you want to analyze the spot, you know how to calculate the EV of the spot. Mm, no. All right, so when you're shoving, let's say he's folding 66% of the time. So two out of three times he's folding to a, to a, to a, to a shove, right? Okay. All right, so you've got 66%, which is kind of unrealistic because I don't think he'll, he'll ever four bet you 15% range here. It's just, it's just insane. But let's, let's say so, let's say so, let's say so. So you like this is this is important so pay attention because this is this will help you calculate the v of every hand so first yeah. of all you got you got let's say he folds two out of three so you got three cases right so you're gonna okay. you're gonna shove you're gonna shove in ten dollars because that is effective stack 
right? You're gonna shove in ten dollars to win two, basically. And two mm -hmm. out of three times, you get plus two dollars, right? Because you win yeah. everything that's down there, and and he folds. And one out of three times, you're putting in it in with king nine offsuit against a range of jacks plus and jacks plus and ace queen. Or we could do we could do nines plus and ace queen. So let's see how how are how are and now you go in poker silver equilab or whatever you want to use and you take your your king nine king of spades nine of diamonds which is isn't actually that relevant so you take king of spades and nine of diamonds and you put in first of all you put in jacks plus and ace ace queen right and you see uh -huh. like it fares 26 percent against it so you're putting in 26 percent you're putting in 10 bucks so the total pot will be twenty dollars so you'll have um basically minus uh and the difference between 73 and 26 yeah so it'll be it'll be something like this times um 73 minus 26. Uh, so it's, it's basically the difference between your equity and his uh, his equity and your equity so it's like it's like this it's like this it's for when you get called it's for when you, when your shove gets called so this is this is kind of like percentage so it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be um 73 minus 26 and it's 47 percent out of 20 and it's uh 20 it, it's kind of like it's kind of like minus 10 it's kind of like minus 10 and you divide it by two because you're two players so minus 10 divided by two equals minus five so every time you do this with with king nine even if you fold 66 percent right you're yeah. gonna be two times plus two right because two other cases two times plus two two mm -hmm. other cases he's he's folding minus five equals one dollar lost so it's minus one minus one lost every time you shove there oh, yeah. Now I realize the situation. So he doesn't. He doesn't really. He doesn't really. Honestly, honestly, he doesn't really. He doesn't really fold that much. And with with nines plus ace queen, ace queen, it's 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 close to break break even. But you don't like. He never folds six six percent there, honestly, because he he'd have to he'd have to. Let's say what is what is what is like thirty five percent steal range from the small blind is this right. And when he gets three bet, he's supposed to continue with 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 a seven suited. He's supposed to four bet with king ten offsuit. I don't think so. I don't think he four bets this range. I don't think he four bets eights and sevens to be honest. And yeah, and and, no. and and yeah, yeah. So basically, like you're never supposed to, you're never supposed to uh, stack off like shove. I I know why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it because you think that. He's trying to bluff you a lot of times. Even if he's bluffing you fifty percent of times, you're still not entitled to do it because he's only putting it down two, and you're putting down ten to win fifty percent of times. And the other fifty percent, you're kind of dead. Yeah. So even if he has like jacks plus ace queen and some combinations of let's say suited aces or some some queen jack offsuit or king queen king queen offsuit here, you still can't jump queen king nine. Yeah, I have to stop that. Yeah, so don't don't try to like you can jam jacks there. You can jam uh, ace queen there. It's not bad. Nines, sure. But like king nine is like you need more equity. You need more equity. So like against that that range like ace queen and nines plus and if you have like king nine offsuit uh mm -hmm. sec king nine offsuit, you got 26%. But if you have a hand like nines for example, it's 37 percent it's something different so ev wise it changes a lot like the difference yeah. between 62 and 37 is like 30 compared to like 50 of the so it's you can yeah sure nines jacks way way better like 50 percent boom right you can yeah. jam jacks and heal's gonna fold like half the time so that's when that's when you're winning you have 50 percent versus his range but you also have the fold equity, so it's a lot better to be like three bet shoving jacks than 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 four betting calling because when you're calling, you don't have that you you don't have that that uh, fold equity. No. Yeah. All right. So That's this true. guy this guy raises from 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 middle position and he gets he gets three bet by this fishy guy. I I, I yeah I I four bet here.
but I'd make it honestly I make it like two or something like that I don't need to make it too much because either even like if this guy goes over top I need to fold because I know that if this guy goes over top he's usually better than ace king yeah, like fish. I know that I know that the fish is here so he'll he'll try to re-isolate oh. him but if he goes over the top of my cold four bet which looks insanely strong and I want like from from today on I wanted I want you to look uh, at ace king a lot more blocker hand than value hand okay so it's a lot more blocker hand you're blocking quite a lot of his value range when you're when you're re-raising with ace king so 280 is way off the charts it's it's way off the chart you don't need to like honest obviously if, if this guy calls you're shoving every flop but you can do that by raising only two so you don't need to invest that much you, you can need to invest two and if this guy goes over top I'm, I'm just holding so this guy insta shoves so i'm putting him on a super super strong hand like like kind of like jacks plus ace king and you're behind with ace king there or like either like queens plus ace king could be this guy like he's he could commit a lot of mistakes so maybe he has jacks but i just think like yeah. usually when like, there's a cold four bet and this guy just shoves it it just looks like it just looks like aces or kings to be honest it just looks like Acer uh, or kings. It, it and does. he actually had jacks which is super weird but it's it, it looks like insane strength there it looks like insane strength yeah so i'm just yeah i'm folding ace king there i'm, I'm re-raised around two I'm, it, it's a weird spot, or I'm flatting preflop. I could do that, but I'm not a big fan of flatting ace king offsuit preflop. It's better just four bet there. Okay. I love this three bet. It's just like this guy is he's gonna call quite a lot. Thirty twenty three. He's he's not too solid. C flats yeah. and four five ten. He bets right out. This is this is what I like. This is what I like. This call is what I like. Raise him. He might fold whatever bluffs he has. Flat him. Yeah. You don't have any any bad cards on turn that could come not even an ace I, i'm not afraid if there's an ace that comes on turn he jams i'm calling i don't care like he only had yeah. like six percent I, I don't even care so he jams a turn awesome six five diamonds perfect if you'd have raised the flop you might have fold, folded six five diamonds so pretty cool yeah probably. all right so ace king i love the three bet here like you should do like in position honestly Remember this, like in position, I usually do 3x. Again, you don't need to invest that much money. Also, this guy just opened like 4x. So he's he's kind of like, yeah, you don't really need to make it. Like 1.2 is fine. It gives you a lot more um, room post-flop for moves. So it, like mm -hmm. it, it, it gives you a lot more. If you want to like check raise, let's say, or, or just raise all in, you're putting a lot more chips. You have more fold equity, right? Than, yeah. than, than if you make the pot bigger and it's sorry it's harder for them to fold so this guy just flats and you get king five deuce to be honest on this flop like he flats me I, mm. I know he looks fishy but I just love to check back these flops like pot size is is I, I need two streets to get him in right because I bet two yeah. and then I bet like four and he's got like 680 i need two streets to get him get him in what does he have on this flop except for like king queen or king jack that hits this board why not just check it back and let him try to bluff me like you're afraid of people trying to bluff you right let him check yeah, back let man. him try to bluff you you got the absolute nuts on this flop except for like pocket fives or pocket deuces which you're dead to so why not keep keep the bluffs in his range or keep some queen jack that he could hit on turn and you can get value from he's folding almost everything that 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 you beat here and you're not letting him get a chance to to catch something so i just check back the slop i don't even i don't even care i just check back the slop there's no draws there's nothing yeah so i check, check back really the slop like 150 he's he's calling with king queen and probably king jack suited if he calls it preflop i guess that's about it so he he raises you and yeah I, I, this is this is where i flat obviously like what's he raising with on this flop like pocket t pocket deuce pocket fives king queen i guess or or some some yeah. weird bluff some weird jacks weird play jacks because this guy wears yeah. that so i flat i, I never i never yeah i think he had a king queen off yeah I'm sure. yeah so jack on turn i'm not afraid of that card i'm, I'm just like and also the pot odds are like 23 percent always always and he hit he, he did hit the queen on the river so yeah that's what it, it, this does but this i know these spots are tilting you and i know exactly why you get tilted because uh you're used to let's say in in and you're you're a smart guy i i, I don't want to i'm not i'm not 
like stepping on any feet or whatnot you're a smart guy like it takes a lot of brains to be like super pro in some games like it takes reaction times yeah, it takes a lot of strategy so you're pissed when these guys who are who are like super super cretins like retards they take away <laughs> your money and you you know exactly what they have they have no idea what you have but they just river you and it seems like they river you every time it's not true that they river you every time but it is true that you get pissed when when they do and you remember those moments very accurately yeah that's because true. you remember this hand you remember what he had yeah. right <laughs> So you remember th these these things piss you off so much. You remember them with great accuracy. And someone very very smart said that uh, poker players will always remember with great accuracy their biggest bad beats. That but they will have trouble recalling their their biggest pots won. So it's yeah. it's it's your case. It's it's very true. And I think that you should be like a little bit like I, I took a little bit more humble approach to poker. Like I, mm -hmm. I I I recommend this. Like, like sure, yeah, sure. You're smart. He's dumb. You're making money off him, but mm -hmm. I I do it in a more more humble fashion, and that that kind of like opened my eyes sometimes because I saw a player. Like what opened my eyes was that I saw a player who was the same nationality as me, and yeah. he he took my money, and after that, like by rivering me, and after that he started swearing at me, and he left the table, and I was like. He rivered me in the most insane way, like like river trips, and that was it. He had like two outs, and I was like, and and then he swears at me. He he calls me retard, and he leaves the table. I was like, I want to be the exact opposite of that. I want when when uh, I river someone, I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But it happens, but I'm I'm sorry. Well, honestly, I'm I'm humble like that. When I get rivered. Uh -huh. I'm gonna like, all right. I know that I'm beating that guy in the long run, so I know that I'm beating that guy in the long run. So, yeah, why should I? I I shouldn't really I shouldn't really get pissed. I shouldn't really get pissed when yeah. when I get rivered because I know in the long run that I'm making money off that exact guy. That guy is the weakest at the table, and I put it in good. I put my money in good, so I I don't really I don't really care if. If he rivers me as many times as as possible, I can remember like someone coming in. I was I was mm -hmm. starting tables, so I, I I don't I don't usually play on stars. I play on the softer side, and I start okay. tables there. So I sit down at six max tables, and regs will sit sit with me for a while. But after that, they just see I just I just whip their asses, and they just they just <laughs> either sit at the table and sit out, or or just 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 leave completely and the only guys that will sit down with me are the fish because they don't know me yeah. they just want to play i'm i'm totally available for all of them after the fish sits down rex come rex come right at the door to just fill the table because that's that's how it happens but i have first few hands with the fish and i was playing heads up with this fish who was just shoving every hand every time <laughs> i raised so every time he was in the small blind he folded every time i raised he shoved on me 100 blinds so i caught a little bit of hands i caught i caught queens he caught king four he destroyed me I caught ace 10, he caught ace deuce, he destroyed me, and he just took four stacks off my table and left. And oh, just, just left instantly. I was like, oh my fucking god, is this day gonna be like this? And also, uh, like, have you ever seen my stream? Have you ever seen me play spitting goes? Like, sometimes I just get the worst beat ever. I'm not even phased. I'm not even phased. Like, today was so sick because I got my aces cracked by seven dudes. I got my kings yeah, cracked by 10-3. It. <laughs> it was so sick. It was, it was really And then I ran so... kings and aces and, like, full full spin and go. Like, but it's fine. It's fine. Like, it happens. I know in the long run that I'm winning or I know in the long run that yeah. these are the players that I'll make the more money off, right? So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, what limits are you playing right now? Uh, I'm playing only on 10 and I will play it as long as I will beat it. I want to beat it so badly. So I suggest, I actually suggest going down for a bit and don't, before you start swearing at me, um, yeah. you haven't, you haven't won for a long time consistently and you need mm. to, you need to feel like, feel how it feels. 
to to win consistently at the limit. And I suggest going like something like no limit five, trying to beat no limit five consistently. Stop being so aggressive. Stop like no one is no one is is trying to bluff you that much, especially at these limits where people are terrible at value betting. They won't value bet as much, and when they do, they usually have at least top pair or some other stuff. So. Yeah. That is that is how you get to higher higher limits. You learn to bluff better. You learn to value bet better because those are the skills in poker, and mm. um, that that's basically how you make money. So, um, basically, you need to start winning consistently at any limit possible. It doesn't really matter. So any limit, NL two, NL five, no matter what. And I played uh, NL two for like ten uh, k hands, and I won like for the buy-ins or something like that good good but 10k hands is subjective to a little bit of variance right yeah. so you could you could have a huge upswing i say 50k so that you can really feel that 50k is like 50 hours you can make it in in mm. 10 days or something like that i in, in my good grind days yeah. i used to play like six six hours per day so you can make it you can make it in like in like 10 days just just do that just win constantly and then go up and you'll feel a little bit of refreshment to be honest and also yeah yeah like session reviews could be awesome and usually when i session review i review biggest pots and also i apply some filters so i go to more filters i apply other advanced filters and the most like what i found with my students when when i um like most of their most of their like leaks would be different from yours but what i found that were kind of like called preflop three bet was kind of like yeah. universal called preflop four bet you should only be doing this at an only 10 with aces or kings just trap um mm. or or some ace king suited ace king suited or maybe pocket queens sometimes and just stacking off on any non-ace non-king board um yeah. Did did squeeze really important face preflop four bet face preflop four bet after hero three bets. So every time you want to like add a filter, just just click a plus and just click OK and it'll be it'll be good. Do not add more filters okay. because it'll just filter out like it'll just use the same at the same time. So it will show no hands. So you have to add one at a time. And okay. like on the river, like if if you wanna if you wanna see something really interesting, take all your hands. And add uh, river hero raise. So river hero yeah. raise. Find find river hero raise R or river bet raise or river call raise or R river check raise should be the best. River check raise should be the best because that that is when I think you're the most aggressive and unneeded. And unneeded. Yeah. and you'll you'll kind of like find a lot of fuck my life spots. Why why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. This is in. really like mm, eyes opening. This review, it's like I I think I will play a lot of better, but it's only now one hour, so 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 I think this will help me a lot. Awesome, man! Awesome. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. If you ever need more in the future, and I think you do. Just do not hesitate to contact yeah. me. Like fifty euros for three hours is 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 kind of like a good package. Most people, oh. to be honest, get the three hour package, and after that, I give them um, I give them like um, uh, like fifty euros for three hours, and after that, they pay me one hundred for the rest of the seven because it's it's kind of like getting a demo up front. But it's just yeah, every time every time I go through hands with them, it's just awesome. And also like based along, I I coached him for like three hours. Now he's crushing in Altan. He had the foundation to be honest. So he was he was like he's he's kind of nitty to be honest. He's kind of nitty. But I, I I taught him some other stuff, and I was now he's doing pretty great. I was doing pretty great, and I think you uh, could do very very good. But I don't think the secret is playing a lot. I think the secret is studying like studying your game a lot and studying especially opponents what are their ranges get into get into a poker stove and equilab play with some ranges try to see are they like and the answer is no whenever you're thinking um are they bluffing me no no limit 10 no no limit 25 no no limit 50 maybe that's when that's when the really interesting yeah. stuff starts but at 10 and no limit 25 it just you just need to play exploitive game that's it 
Uh, did he have uh, any same leaks that I had? This basically long. Uh, um, going Which overboard with Ace King preflop. I can remember this. This is this is most like stacking off when you don't need to. Um, okay. And especially calling all ends with Ace King offset preflop is just yeah, it's, it's just brutal. And yeah. and kind of like going overboard with queens also. Uh, calling a lot of three bets from guys who three bet tight with marginal hands, and yeah. not not giving nits enough credit, basically. Okay. Yeah, so I guess that's about it, man. I hope I hope this helped you a lot. Yeah, for sure. I hope this will help you a lot. Again, the key is not to is not to play a lot. It's to study your game and just play play a little bit. I I'd, I'd go down. For just a little while, if 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 okay. I were you, I'd go down for just a little while. Don't you don't have to take a hit to your confidence. You probably already did quite a lot because you're not beating NL10 anymore. But this will help rebuild your confidence a little bit. Trust me on this one. I did this actually. I did this, and after okay. after like kind of like uh, a long time, like one time I hit this huge downswing, 20 buy-ins. I was like baffled, and but I I went down. I grinded up like. Hard work, but I grinded up a little bit, and it felt a lot better. I felt a lot like more confident in my game, so now I can just go up and I started. I started studying a little bit of opponents that um, messed with my head a little bit. I just thought they did. They would just run into hands, and that was it. And they they'd be such nits. Okay, so thank you for this, and I will take more hours in the future for sure. Yeah, sure, man. So okay. Sure, you're you're a great player. You're a great player. You have the potential. You just need to channel it a little bit better, especially when when everyone is just so tight. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate. No worries. No worries. I'll catch on. I'll catch on my stream. Or could you could you link me your stream though? Uh yeah, but I haven't been streaming like in four months. But... Ah yeah, sure. I I could I could watch a past broadcast or something like that then. Maybe, maybe, or or yeah. just or just I I could, I could give you a follow. Maybe maybe catch when when you're going online.